Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Boneside. On today's episode, I'm going to reflect on the PSGF so far. But first, the build in under 15 minutes. I started this huge project like I do most bigger ones with a few scribbles of my ideas. How big would it be, the basic design? These drawings did become this. Let's back up. The big question, where to put it? As I sat on my house roof one early spring day, I thought maybe on the left side of the garden. We decided to put it behind the fire pit on the right side. So really the tough part is over. Making the shape was the hardest part because we had the black dirt, roots, plants that we had to sort out, kind of about 13 by seven for an eventual 12 by six cold frame greenhouse. And now it's just sand and rocks. This definitely need, just needs stages or I'm gonna kill myself. I got another shovel depth at least. I left this shelf in here so I can come up and easily get into the wheelbarrow so we can continue our piles underneath the pine tree. Why dig by hand? I feared heavy machinery would just collapse the sand walls. That's a lot of dirt, a lot of sand, throwing it really high. More to do. And boy, did I have to do more. This was the hardest part of the dig. I've been waiting for this moment for quite a long time. We are at the point now where we get to start mixing cement. Toby put all the rebar in, we've got the frame in here, it's relatively level. Let's just get to it. We've got some cement to do, some more back baking work. We got the water, we got the cement, we got the uh, mixing uh, trowels. Let's just get going. This is a huge accomplishment. 63 bags of 60 pound cement from the store in the car. One, two, three, five car loads with Toby's help. The cement is in place all the way around. The footings are done. Next up is going to be the brick wall. I've never laid brick before. I'm looking forward to that challenge. All in all, I was pleased with how I responded to this challenge. The walls are not perfectly plumb, but I'm okay with how they turned out. And since I was going to fill it back with sand, I felt it would be supportive of my PSGF. A shout out to my son Toby for all the help with the heavy lifting. Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bone Side. On today's episode, the weeping tiles for the airflow are going in today. So we measured out the tubes so we would have a cap on one end and we'd have the intake and the outtake uh, tubes going up the elbow of the uh, six inch PVC piping. And then we have some uh, couplers that are gonna have all the uh, weeping tile, uh, the tubing to get connected to it. I poured some sand in both sides of the end of the uh, pastel solar green frame bottom section because we're going to put these wood planks in here and make them real nice and level. So the weeping tile or draining tile air tubes for us perforated and sucked. I need nine to go across. The next set of pipes are in. Standing on the west edge, there is the uh, vent that's gonna bring up the cool air in the summertime, bring up the warm air in the wintertime. Probably about another half a dozen wheelbarrows. We'll level all this out and then sand will finish the job. Now, some viewers were concerned that with heavy watering over time on my trees inside the PSGF would settle down through the sand and the rocks and possibly seep into the drain tile system. But the folks over at Verge Permaculture, whose program I ordered to create the PSGF, said I should be fine. Over a very long period of time, some water and some sand could find its way into some of the drain tile space, but not enough to create any major problems.
Now it was time to start building up the walls. The north wall would be the easiest, and so that's where I started. It's coming up on four o'clock in the afternoon and I just recently finished kind of part two of today's work. West side wall where the door is gonna be and the window's gonna be. It was really kind of a puzzle to put together. Now, the south wall is the most important wall in my opinion. It is what's called the knee wall of the PSGF, which means usually you want snow to fall off and it's gonna pile up down there, but there's gonna be windows on the uh, vertical part and then there's gonna of course be the three big panes of window that forms that slant for the, hopefully the best angle in the uh, middle part of winter. Now I need to place a couple of ends in and we're gonna see if we can put this next puzzle piece together in the next hour or two. I'm very pleased with day one of the lumber construction of the PSGF. A big shout out to uh, my wife and my two stepsons. My stepfather popped on over. We were able to hoist this big back wall. Stepfather and I cranked together the front wall. We were able to give our extra support and uh, the headers all the way across. So what a fantastic day. We have the door frame in. We have the lower window frame in. Let's get this wall built and move on to finish this section of the PSGF. Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the Passive Solar Green Frame, part five. I was able this morning to go ahead and get some supports on the back and the east side. So I went with 5 8 plywood, smooth on the outside. I'll probably paint or stain that at the beginning. The nice thing about the north wall is that it's pretty easy construction. Then I was able to put the east side wall in, trace out some of the holes for the window that's gonna go in and cut a little nub off on the corner and get that secure. We're kind of building a greenhouse and also a cold frame. This whole side is going to be windows. The northern wall is all going to be insulation. It's going to hopefully retain some of the heat in the winter time. Hot air from the greenhouse in the hottest parts of the day, even in the winter time, will go down and warm up those rocks. And then it's going to be fanned the air, circulating the air in the winter time to make sure that the passive solar green frame part of it, the cold frame, this doesn't get uh, too hot. You've probably heard it said more than once in your life to measure twice and cut once. Even though I did that, I struggled. The rafters work was by far the toughest part for me in this build. Again, it's not all perfectly plumb, but it has plenty of stability to keep everything up just fine. And then it was time for some of the piddly stuff that included lots and lots of jigsawing. So not only is the door in place, but I was able to get all five of the windows in place. So here we have the front three windows in place. So back on the west side of the green frame where the door is, I have the uh, one of the two side windows. And so as I come around the east side of the green frame, here's the other window that matches the window over there. Now if you've watched HGTV in the last decade or two, you know what shiplap is. Here's my rendition of shiplap. I did like how it turned out. All these planks were individually stained. Well, when they were whole pieces, of course. Well, there were a few kinks along the way. The roof is on. Fantastic, super exciting. I was so excited to get those panels in place. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, mistake here. A design flaw, the frames were an inch too short. This just meant a little more work. So back to the piddly stuff. Hi, 
Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, do I have to dig this hole again? After consulting with Verge Permaculture again, yep, I did not have to dig. That was great. I was very relieved. The level of water getting down into those drain pipes was not significant according to their engineers. So let's fix the window frames and move on. <laughs> It was time to backfill more of the sand to level off the PSGF floor. After that, I was able to add the quartz floor. This would keep most of the dirt from splashing up on the PSGF windows and walls. Then I started constructing some foundation blocks to put under the cement pillars I would be building. Now all of this cement would hold heat with thermal mass in the PSGF, which would hopefully hang on to a few more degrees for a little while longer on those cold winter days. I've had a lot of decisions to make with the passive solar green frame and one of them was what was going to be the final surface of the inside. So I ended up going with some hardboard and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually spray paint the whole thing a gray color. Though these are lightweight panels, this was a time consuming piece of the build. Once the boards were up, I started to add the trim work to hide all the connection points and prevent a little bit more moisture from seeping in the walls. As the sun comes out of the clouds, I'm excited to show you that the solar panel has been installed. So we have some hinges on top and we have this support beam right here where most of the weight is on this right here. And then in the summertime, when I want more of the sun to power up the power station, I can go ahead and lift this up and have it at an angle that's more like this for the midday sun. This is rated for 200 watts. You always want to get more than you think you're going to need. I was close to my goal of finishing the outside by November 1st. I put in my two automatic opening vent windows and was then ready to work on the outside metal siding and roofing. Don't forget everyone, gloves when you're working with these metal panels and find a partner to help when you can. So much safer. My goal was to finish by November 1st. So by finish, I wanted to make sure that the outside of the PSGF, the passive solar green frame, was all secure. And so let's give you a tour of the outside of the passive solar green frame to see if I've reached my goal of being secure and finished on the outside by November 1st. We have the front of the PSGF. We've got the windows in place. The siding is all done. The solar array, well, <laughs> one panel <laughs> is up there. And we have the two vent windows left and right that open up when it gets 75 degrees or warmer on the inside. The front of the PSGF, check. The west facing wall, we've got the door. We've got a little light up there just outside the door, solar powered, so I can see where I'm going at night. Window down below, the vent up on top. And the side of the roof up there, that's all metal and complete. The west side of the PSGF, check. The east side of the PSGF, the window down below secure, the siding's been on there for a while, the vent up top, and yes, we have some metal siding up top as well for the fascia and soffit. The east side of the PSGF, check. The north side of the PSGF, we've got our metal siding all connected. We have the roof of the PSGF all secured with the trim on the side and underneath the fascia and soffit. The north side of the PSGF, check. Yes, that was a project and a half for sure. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this PSGF, and I absolutely love it. Would I do a few things differently? Absolutely. So we're gonna talk about a few of those things now, a little reflection on the PSGF, and at the very end, how much money I spent on this beast of a green frame slash greenhouse. So, why a passive solar green frame? Well, the main reason is I wanted to extend my growing season. The planting people call it a shoulder season. So I want to be able to wake up my trees a little earlier in March and then put them to bed later in late November, even December, before they go dormant. I should be able to let my trees wake up as soon as March, as long as I don't let the PSGF fall below freezing at that point. And how do I do that with the PSGF? Well, the airflow system. So I have the top pipe up here, 
that's going to collect all the warm air from the top of the PSGF, even in the hot summer months, but of course in the hot winter months too, when the sun is coming here and warming this up too hot. The heat goes down the pipe with the fan that's going to suck it down. It brings it underneath the PSGF about five feet below the ground, and it gets that rock and air area down there nice and warm and cozy, relatively. And then it shoots it back up the exhaust pipe on the other side of the PSGF, and that creates some nice airflow as well as a little bit of warmth. So in the dead of winter, when things get really cold, if it drops below 35 in here, this fan will automatically start and suck the air through the system again and pump up some of that relatively warmer air to get this a little bit cozier in here and above freezing. The fans and vents in the PSGF are powered by my Blue Eddy power generator, which of course gets all its energy into the battery through the solar panel on the roof of the PSGF. I also have a ceramic style heater in the PSGF. In case it gets really cold, this will kick in if it's absolutely needed. Now the PSGF was built very tall and for a reason we want the heat to go up there and not down here and so the heat does rise. So everything from about eye level up has gotten into the 50s and above sometimes in the middle of winter even if it's 25 outside. The beautiful window exposure is making the greenhouse effect work really well. But we don't want our plants really above 40 if we can help it. So this is 50 and above and this down below is usually in the 40s and below, especially from the level of the shelf on down. So all the trees below the shelf are really pretty safe all winter long. And then these on the shelf are just a little bit at risk of getting a little bit warm. But so far none of them are waking up early and it's the uh, third part of uh, February, the third week of February. So we're doing pretty good in that category. I put some pink insulation and some thin paneling here on the lower windows of the PSGF so less of that solar heat would get in. And so this has kept this mid-range where it needs to be. Um, the sun is getting plenty of energy in here to warm it up. And then that warm air, this does turn on and it gets that uh, air down below and the rocks in the air below the PSGF a little bit warmer. I am very, very pleased with the PSGF and can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next couple of seasons. But what would I do differently? The first thing I would do differently is I would have made this particular PSGF one foot wider. Now it's a good size for my yard, not too big, not too small. My wife really likes it. It looks pretty good from the outside. But if I had one more feet of movability in here with all the trees when they stack up, that would be great. I'm thinking about another bench over here with trees underneath and trees up top. And that's going to keep me kind of skinny in here. One foot wider would have been great. Number two. One of the biggest mistakes I and everybody else seems to make with greenhouses is ventilation. So I have a really good fan on the west wall and I'm going to get a duplicate fan and put it over on the east wall. The ventilation is the most important. Sure, I can open up my door in the hot summer months and even in the winter if I have to, but proper ventilation of any greenhouse is crucial. And for me, when it's sunny outside in the middle of January and it's only 25 outside but the sun makes it in here 50 and higher, I need those fans to suck in some cool air or get rid of the warm air in conjunction with the fan that'll suck in the warm air and bring it down underneath into the rocks. Better ventilation, it's a must. Number three, if I were to build this exact greenhouse again, I definitely would dig down deeper than five feet. I would want it six to seven feet so the permafrost layer is not as close to where the air is circulating down below there. And so it keeps it right now right around 40 degrees. I'd like it to be 45 or higher uh, with the winter months. Number four, I definitely need more power. So I would need another panel for sure, 200 and 200 for 400 watts of solar power. But then I also would need a much bigger generator, a generator that's going to crank out a lot more energy a lot longer with bigger battery life. This year was one of the cloudiest winters on record. In both December and January, we had like four or five days with sun. And so how do you get solar power without the sun? We need a bigger power station with bigger battery life and more solar going in when it's sunny. Number five, too many windows. Yeah, the west window over there, the east window over here, completely gone. We're going to put insulation there to hold in more of that heat at night. And then these knee wall windows, they call this the knee wall. I would put windows only from about halfway up or maybe a third of these window panes up. Now these windows were free for me so I couldn't pass it up and my wife really likes the way it looks. So you're going to of course weigh those based on what you've got and what you can do in your neck of the woods. These upper panels up here, these three window panels up here, south facing on the top of the greenhouse, plenty of windows to get that heat effect 
from the greenhouse. And number six. So if I were to truly make a passive solar green frame, I would have to add an additional room to this structure. I've got a greenhouse for the most part, and I've been keeping the temperatures where I need them for my trees this year. But if I were to build this again and had more room on a big chunk of land somewhere, here's what I would do. I would add four to six feet this way at eight feet tall so the roof would come down and over and that four feet to six feet by 12 feet long, that would entirely be closed off, no windows and a cold frame. So all the trees could stay in there and not worry about the real high heats up top. So I would make that a little bit bigger and then I'd put a little vent holes, a couple of them with some fans. So when this heats up in the glorious uh, warmth of the day in the winter time, I could pipe in just enough heat to keep this plenty warm during the day and then at night as well with of course the air circulating throughout the bottom. So adding that section I think would make the perfect passive solar green frame instead of just the green house that I basically built. But again, with the systems in place, it's still working. With any project this big, there's always going to be a few gaffes and a few things that you would do differently next time. But let me repeat, I love the PSGF and I love to just hang out in here and I think in a few moments I'm going to put up the old hammock and take a little rest in here as it's feeling great today on this sunny day as it peeks through the clouds. But I also wanted to tell you about the price of this particular PSGF. And again, supplies can be different where you are. You might have some access to reduced, reused, recycled materials, right? Repurposed stuff, and that's fantastic. My windows were completely free. The door was completely free, and I still spent thousands of dollars. Let's break it down for you, okay? The foundation and cinder block walls, that cost me $1,322 in cement and bricks and miscellaneous equipment. Number two, the drain tiles and airflow tubing, that cost me $1,239, not cheap for those materials. Number three, the main structure, including the wood and all the materials, the bolts, the screws, the nuts, all of that, that was the biggie, $2,278. Now the window materials, I had all the windows, but I had to have some stuff, the tape and the sealer, uh, that cost me $381. The solar generator and the panel up top and a little bit of the venting materials cost me just over $1,000, $1,080. Number six, the roofing and siding, the metal roofing and the materials to put it into place cost me $564. And then we wrap it up with something called miscellaneous, right? There's always odds and ends. I bought the little temperature gauge up here. I got a solar fan and so some solar lights. Those miscellaneous items cost me $490. That also included the gas to and from the box store that I got all my supplies and a box of these once or twice. Yes, they're not paying me for anything, but I love dots. My wife does too. And Menards is not paying me anything, but if you buy dots at Menards, they're always super, super fresh. And if I would have spent a little bit less on the dots, maybe I would have come in a little bit under this mark. The total all-in price for this passive solar green frame, $7,354. That's a chunk of change. Now I had saved up a few thousand dollars before I even started and I just made monthly payments to get this thing going, bought things slowly but surely, and I was able to squeak it out. So it is paid for and everything is ready to go for the future of the PSGF. This has been an absolutely joy to build and to share with all of you. And it's time for me now to maybe work on a tree in the passive solar green frame. So hey, as always, thanks for watching. Take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll see you on the next one.